All right, guys, so here's a very important result, which basically tells me what uh, players can achieve in an Infinite Horizon repeated game if uh, they're patient enough. Uh, well, uh, let me read the result, and then I'm going to look at a specific example. So it says the following, consider any infinitely repeated game, and suppose that this the, 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 the stage game has a Nash equilibrium, which yields the following vector, all right, payoff vector. So player one gets W1, player two gets W2. For example, in this Prisoner's Dilemma, there's one Nash equilibrium, and the W here is 1-1. One, one. Both players get one, all right? Uh, so if there are many Nash equilibrium, so which payoff vector I should pick, doesn't matter, just pick one of them. Well, then let's consider another uh, payoff vector, V, but it's feasible. I'll talk about what feasible means. Feasible average per period payoff such that each player receives at least the Nash equilibrium payoff, WI, in this V. Well, then this vector V can be supported arbitrarily closely, maybe not exactly, but arbitrarily closely by a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium if delta is close enough to one, meaning if players are patient enough, we can actually guarantee these players payoff, uh, very close payoff to uh, the, 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 this payoff VI, all right? Well, here in this game, uh, so this is a prisoner's dilemma game, I changed the payoff slightly. So the Nash equilibrium is 2-2, two, two, as you see, but you know, it's not the most efficient payoff. Actually, the most efficient payoff uh, I'm sorry, the, the strategy profile is DC and CD. I mean, CC is not even uh, the e efficient either. Uh, I'm sorry, the most efficient either. Uh, so here, what is the set of feasible payoffs? Well, remember in this stage game, players can get, so this is payoff of player one, this is payoff of player two. So the pay player two can get at most uh, six payoff, in which case player is gonna get one, all right? And, and symmetrically, player one can get six payoff and, and player two gets zero. Player one and two get one and one, and they can get two and two, all right? So these four dots are basically the payoffs uh, that can be achieved in this game. So what about the average payoff in this game? So the feasible average payoff is gonna be a convex, any convex combination of those four vectors. Well any convex combination of these two vectors is basically this triangle starting from this 0, 6 and 6, 0 and 1, 1, all right? So it 2, 2 is in, in this. So this triangle is basically the set of feasible. So let's write it. Set of feasible uh, average payoffs, all right? Well, this theorem says, hey, look, uh, look at the Nash equilibrium uh, payoff vector, which is 1, 1, right? So therefore, consider all the vectors where players get more than 1, right? So this is basically the, the, the 1 line for player 1, uh, for player 2, I'm sorry. Above this, player 2 gets higher than 1. And this is the 1 line for player 1, and meaning... Uh, to the right of this, player one gets higher than payoff one. And on the left side, uh, player one gets lower than payoff one. So therefore, all these points are not only feasible, but also gives both player one and two payoff more than one. So this is where we pick V. It's feasible and both players achieve payoff higher than uh, one. So this result says, consider any payoff in this smaller triangle. Actually, we can find some subgame perfect Nash equilibrium where players payoff in this game gets very close to V, all right? So for example, here, so that means zero six cannot be supported as an equilibrium, I mean, according to this result, but it says, for example, three, three is here, all right? So it's, it's definitely better than 2-2. Two, two. We know that 2-2 two, two can be supported as an sp &E. But what about 3-3? Three, three? Can this be supported on average, obviously? Can this be, because there's no way both players can get three at the same time in this game, right? But if they play this game 
infinite horizon, can they get close to 3-3? Three, three? Well, yes, they can. How? Well, for example, what they can do, they can rotate between DC and C. So sometimes they play DC and so player one gets six. So half of the times, let's think it that way, all right? Half of the times player one gets six uh, and half of the times player two gets six. Obviously for the rest of the half, player one is getting zero and also player two is getting zero. So therefore, you know, half of the time you get six, half of the time you get zero. And so the average is three, all right? So that's kind of the idea. Well, to be more formal, uh, let's define the following green trigger strategy. It's gonna be uh, slightly more complicated than the previous example or the previous green trigger strategy because we were trying to show uh, it's sort of a relatively easier payoff as an SPN. So this one is a bit more complicated because it requires sort of a combination of uh, uh, two, uh, how should I put it, uh, a cooperation uh, a payoff profile, a action profile. Well, so here's the strategy profile. On odd periods, uh, the players are going to play D and C, meaning player one is going to play D, player two is going to play C on odd periods. On even periods, I'm going to assume zero is an even or period. So the, the first period is even, I mean. On even periods, they're going to play CD, meaning player one is going to play C, player two is going to play D. All right. So that's how they're going to coordinate. Uh, so this is period 100. Huh. So therefore, uh, we're going to play CD. All right. So uh, the thing is, they're going to keep doing this as long as nobody deviates. If anybody deviates, if any deviation, all right, so I cheated and just said any deviation. What does that mean? That means, for example, uh, it was an odd period, but player one played C rather than D, all right? Or it was an even period, player one played D rather than C. You see what I mean? So if there's any deviation, well, then these players are going to play D, D for the rest of the game. All right. So here, there are not just one subgame I need to consider. They're, you know, different subgames. So subgame, subgames that I should consider is basically the following. No deviation. All right. And it's uh, no deviation and uh, period T is odd. All right, and then another subgame, no deviation, and the period T is even, right? Which means on this period T, they're going to play DC, and here it means on this period, they're going to play CD. By sort of dividing those, you know, possible subgames, I actually am making sure that what deviation means in this analysis, all right? So that's that's important. And then obviously a deviation. So some deviation occurred. Well, in this case, whether period is even or odd, who cares? What we know is that DD forever is the uh, strategy for the rest of the game. And we know that this constitutes Nash equilibrium because DD is the Nash equilibrium of the stage game. So we do not really worry about sub games. So there are three, a class of subgames we need to analyze. We don't really need to make analysis for this subgames because we already know that they are forming Nash equilibrium.